We are excited to be here at Pendennis Castle on the coast of Cornwall to explore its remarkable defences. English Heritage, who own the site, have given us kind permission to film as tourists. There is a lot to see and do here, but our focus will remain on the batteries rather than the castle or barracks. Hello and welcome to Battery Charge. On this episode, we take a look at the battery observation post. This is a great setup by English Heritage. In the last episode, we looked at the Hafen battery. In this episode, we look at the battery observation post. Looks as if we're in for a better shower. We are trying to make sense of all the graphs and diagrams on the display here that might give us a clue to the battery observation post's inner workings. From what we've seen and heard, we deduce the battery observation post works like a communications hub that's controlled the guns. The BOP would receive target information from Falmouth via command. That information was gathered from target spotters, such as other batteries along the coast, or perhaps the RAF or the Royal Navy. And later in World War II, radar would also have been used to spot targets. So, how did it all work? Well, here's what we think would have happened. B is for battery. Gunners of the half moon battery would load, fire and maintain the guns. That's all well and good. But rubbish if you intend to hit something specific. According to this very handy guidebook, the BOP would send directional instructions to the guns of the half moon battery. So, the BOP controlled the guns. Yes indeed. In the beginning, telephone communication seems like an obvious way to instruct the gunners on how to move the guns into firing position. As time went on, this was too slow and controlling the guns was changed. The guns were controlled using a system of electrical signals. It was called Magslip. We don't know exactly how Magslip works, but we reason that it's similar to a remote control system. O is for observation. And as the word suggests, observation was essential to accurate target information. This was twofold. Target spotters in the BOP identifying a target, perhaps using binoculars. And target plotters, who would work out the exact location of the target. Target plotting, the more information you have on the distance and range of a target, the better the chances of working out its speed and direction. Calculating accurate locations is done through triangulation. Sources suggest triangulation is using two fixed points and the target to find the target's distance relative to the battery. Here you can see the remains of a panorama detailing the views on the horizon with key landmarks and distances marked up. According to the tour guides at St Anthony Head Battery, the Bob may have used this panorama when triangulating a target's position and plotting distance. From here, bearing a range of calculators using this equipment. Depression range finder. Uh, according to the handy guidebook, the depression range finder was similar to a telescope. It was used to triangulate a target's position on a grid that would have been on this table. This would eventually identify targets, speed and course, and predict where to fire. If a target went out of range, the information would be sent to a fire command, who would organise closer batteries in the area. P is for post, situated on high ground with a good field of view. And, therefore, a good view of the field of fire. The post has a low profile, offering a less of a target from the sea. It may have also been camouflaged from air attack. It's a concrete structure dug into the rampart of the castle. And that is how we think the bot may have worked. On reflection, how did you find this bot? Uh, interesting. 
Uh, it was a 4D setup. English Heritage have worked really hard with resources to replicate the experience of being in an active battery observation post. So the equipment and the sound effects give you a better idea of what it was like in an operational battery observation post. In comparison to Burnstone Bop in episode 3, seems like the same design. Uh, yes, the structure is minimalist, a uh, simple rectangle. Um, there is evidence in Pendennis of an underground area that has been sealed. Um, I would say, yeah, they're very much the same. It would be good if the English heritage could open it up. Uh, yes, absolutely it would be. Hypothetically speaking, did you feel like a target in the uh, in a way, yes, I feel like the battery observation post was exposed to attack from above. Tell us about the mural. Uh, well, uh, there are the remains of a uh, panorama painting all the way around the inside of the battery observation post. According to the tour guides at St Anthony Head in episode 5, they told us that it was painted by the artillerymen who actually were at the battery and it was used to work out distance, range and that sort of thing on a sort of a painted map. Hmm. Clever stuff. Yeah, um, it would be good if English Heritage uh, restored it or stopped it from deteriorating. There are other battery observation posts out there. If you've been to one, let us know what it was like in the comments below. Next time on Battery Charge, we take a look at one gun and a magazine. Until then, please check out our links in the description for a host of references, including a recording by a chap called Dennis, who actually served here during World War II. Over the guns. I wonder what that's all about. It looks like some sort of shield to offer protection from attack from the skies, but uh, I'm not sure how much protection I would offer from a bomb.